Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. And I'm here to read the next two chapters of Magic Tree House book, Stage Fright on a Summer's Night. Um, so we are up to chapter three and that chapter is called The Bear Garden. And the last thing that happened was Annie and Jack were about to go over the London Bridge to see um, where those boys were running to. They said they were going to be late. So chapter three is called The Bear Garden. And uh, this was the picture I gave you a little bit of a sneak of. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> Jack and Annie passed under the stone gateway that led onto the London Bridge. As they started to cross, Jack was amazed. The bridge was so noisy and smelly. Wagon wheels rumbled like thunder over the cobblestones. Pots clinked in carts, horses neighed, shopkeepers sh shouted, good pies, hot peas, new pins, shoes, soap, salt. A shopkeeper caught Jack's eye. What lack you, boy, he shouted. Nothing, thank you, said Jack, and kept walking. Um, when the shopkeeper says, what lack you, um, he's asking, what do you need, right? He's like, what do you need to buy? What are you missing? So all these, all these shopkeepers are trying to sell everything that they have. Um, Watch out, a cart driver yelled. Jack grabbed Annie's hand. He pulled her out of the way. The cart rolled past them over the narrow roadway. Look, said Annie. She pointed to a bear in a wooden cage in the back of the cart. The bear had matted brown fur. His head was down. As the cart rumbled on, Jack shook his head. What's next, he said. Them, said Annie, looking up. She pointed at a huge black at huge black birds sitting hunched at the edges of the rooftops. The birds sat, as sti sat still as they stared down at all the carts and animals and people crossing London Bridge. Jack shivered and moved quickly past the gaze of the giant silent birds. Finally, he and Annie came to the end of the bridge. They stepped onto the river bank. There they stopped and looked around. I wonder where those big kids went, said Annie. Jack studied the crowd heading down the road that led from the bridge. There was no sign of the group of ragged boys. Jack took out the research book. He found the picture of London Bridge. He read aloud, London Bridge connected London to the south bank of the river, an area where Londoners went for entertainment. The Bear Garden was a popular spot. The Bear Garden, said Annie, that sounds great. Where's that? Jack found a map of the South Bank. He pointed to a circle that was labeled Bear Garden. Here, he said, he looked up, and there, he pointed to a dark round building in the distance. Great, said Annie, I want to see the garden filled with bears. Let's read, started Jack, let's look, said Annie. She headed toward the Bear Garden. Jack put away their book and followed her. As they got closer, they heard loud shouting and laughter coming from inside the round building. Annie stopped. Wait, she said, I'm getting a bad feeling about the bear garden. Maybe we should read more about it. Jack opened their book again. He read aloud. At an arena called the bear garden, people watched bears fight with dogs. Animals, animal fights were a common sport in old England. They are against the law today. Bears fight with dogs? Yuck, said Annie. I couldn't stand to watch that. Me neither, said Jack. Forget that, please. He started to walk away. Hey, Jack, look over there, said Annie. She pointed to a cart nearby. That's the bear that passed us on the bridge. I'm really happy Jack and Annie didn't go into the bear garden. I would not want to watch um, some poor bears and dogs fight each other. It sounds really scary and dangerous. Unfortunately, it was something that they used to do as entertainment and it's not legal today, so we don't do that anymore. But unfortunately, that was a way that people um, liked to have fun. Chapter four, a midsummer night's dream. <clears throat> Jack and Annie ran over to the cart. In the back of it was a cage. In the cage was a big brown bear. The bear was slumped over, his head still down. The sign on the cart said, Dan the Dancing Bear. Dan, Annie asked, are you going to fight? 
The lonely looking bear raised his huge head and looked at Annie. His dark eyes were sad. He let out a low moan. I understand, Annie said. You don't want to fight. You're asking me to take you away. Annie reached for the door of the bear's cage. Away with you, someone shouted angrily. That's my bear. Jack and Annie whirled around. The cart driver was charging toward them. Poor Dan the dancing bear. He's mine, I'm selling him, the man shouted. Come on, Annie, let's go, said Jack. He pulled her into the crowd walking down the road. But I have to save Dan, said Annie. Looking over her shoulder, that guy wants to sell him to the bear fights. I know, said Jack, but we can't just steal him. That guy is his owner. Jack looked around. He needed to get Annie's mind off the bear. He saw the group of older kids from the bridge. They were walking toward a round white building. Hey, look, the kids from the bridge, he said. Let's see where they're going. What about Dan, said Annie. We can figure that out later, said Jack. Let's follow those kids now. He steered Annie toward the white building. When they got closer, Jack read the sign out front. A play at the Globe Theater, A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Great, thought Jack. Annie loves plays. She loved acting in them at school. A man, of, at, the a man at the door of the theater a man stood at the door of the theater. He was holding a box. A penny to stand, a penny to stand, he shouted. The older kids dropped coins into the box and went inside. Wow, the play only costs a penny, said Jack. That's cheap. But we don't have any pennies, said Annie. Besides, I want to go back and free the bear. Jack sighed. What will you do with him if you free him, Annie, he asked. I'll figure something out, she said. We'll figure it out when the owner's not standing there, Jack said. Right now, let's learn something about this play. He quickly pulled out the research book. He found a picture of the Globe Theater. He wanted Annie to forget about the bear, so he read with lots of feeling. The first theaters were built in Old England because there was no electricity. Plays were performed during the day when it was light. Almost everyone could afford to go. Neat, huh, said Jack. Annie sighed. Jack kept reading in a loud, dramatic voice. Seating for the audience depended on how much was paid. The people who could afford the higher prices sat in the galleries above the stage. Others stood in an area below the... Boy! Someone shouted. Jack looked up. A man hurried over to Jack and Annie. He was long-legged with a trim beard and twinkly eyes. I could hear you from across the way, the man said. You read very well. Jack smiled shyly. No! You are simply brilliant, the man said, and I am in great need of a boy who is a brilliant reader. Uh-oh. Chapter five is called Stage Fright. So they're standing in front of a theater where there's going to be a play. Jack is reading in a very dramatic way, which means he was putting a lot of feeling and the, um, into what he was reading. And someone heard him <coughs> do a fantastic job. And uh, I wonder if that's how the cover happens, right? Where Jack and Andy end up on a stage. Um, so tomorrow we'll read chapter five called Stage Fright. And we will find out a little bit more about who this man is that wants Jack to read. Um, I'm sure we'll find out more about Dan the Dancing Bear and see if he ever gets saved. Um, yeah, so I will see you guys tomorrow to read chapters five and six. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, the sun is finally out. There's no more snow on the ground. Um, I don't know if you had snow, but I had snow. So I'm very excited that it's a little bit more like spring rather than winter now. All right, everyone, have a great day and I will see you later.